Watching movies during the Lunar New Year holiday has become a new celebration trend for many people in China over the past decade. Now that the holiday is ending, what movies have you watched? The Red Lagoon Tang, the twenty twelve, uh, the Red Lagoon Tang, Fish Life, Two, Shaun Chun Mo, the twenty twelve, Fish Life, Two, Shaun Chun Mo, Ni Zhuan Shi Kong. Chinese movies are off to a flying start this year. Data shows by noon on the fourth day of the holiday, the Spring Festival box office revenue had already exceeded 4 billion yuan, or over 557 million U.S. dollars, making China the world's largest movie market in 2024. Leading the chart are mostly Chinese comedies, including the highly anticipated YOLO, which is adapted from the 2014 Japanese film 100 Yen Love. The long-awaited car racing sequel, Pegasus 2. And comedy drama, Article 20, directed by internationally acclaimed Chinese director Zhang Yimo. None of these is set on a grand scale with dazzling visual effects, yet domestic movies still exhibited notable success during the period. In fact, in 2023, no Hollywood movie has squeezed into the top 10 honors in China, which only happened once during the pandemic back in 2020. In this episode of In Focus, we try to find out why Hollywood movies, once so popular in China, have fallen out of favor in the world's biggest movie market. China's total box office in 2023 topped 53 billion yuan, or over 7.4 billion U.S. dollars. Although this is still lower than the pre-pandemic figure, 64 billion yuan in 2019, it indicates a robust recovery momentum of the country's movie industry, as Chinese domestic productions generated over 80 percent of the total revenue. The top 10 were dominated by domestic titles, with suspense comedy Four River Red ranking first, followed by sci-fi blockbuster The Wandering Earth 2 and crime drama No More Bets. Many are asking, where are the Hollywood movies? And has China lost interest in Hollywood blockbusters? First, let's take a look at the number of Hollywood movies being introduced to the Chinese movie market. Statistics show in 2023, a total of 41 Hollywood movies hit the big screen in the Chinese mainland. This means, on average, every week, a new Hollywood blockbuster is available in Chinese cinemas, which has already recovered to the level of 2019. Among them are sequels to some household names such as Fast and Furious, Mission Impossible, Transformers and Spider-Man. Spider However, none of these became phenomenal like it used to be. For example, in 2011 and 2014, Transformers sequels Dark of the Moon and Age of Extinction topped the Chinese box office respectively. But last year, the latest in its franchise, Rise of the Beast, ranked 24. The Fast and Furious franchises have always been among the top 10 since 2011, until last year when it ranked 12, the highest ranking foreign movie in 2023. Hello to all my Chinese friends. The sequel to Aquaman even debuted in China two days earlier than the U.S. release because of the original's huge success in 2018, when it garnered over a quarter of its total box office from China. But last year, it only collected 47 million U.S. dollars from the Chinese market. 10 days after it was released. Audiences say they've already become wary of these franchises. I think these sequels are all similar. I'm not interested in chasing every sequel. We watched Mag to the Trench last year because we liked the first one. But I think in recent years, the stories in Hollywood sequence have become quite repetitive. There isn't enough novelty. 
Hollywood blockbusters like superhero movies have caused aesthetic fatigue among audiences not only in China but also around the world. The key is not what to tell, but how to tell. If a movie is filled with nothing but action and visual effects, it's not attractive anymore because people have seen too much of the technology. But if you have a good story, no matter if it's a franchise or not, it'll touch people's hearts and souls. That being said, some are asking why Barbie and Oppenheimer, the two biggest Hollywood hits and award-winning good stories, didn't even get into the top 30 in the Chinese box office chart last year. Chinese audiences say that's because they often find such American movies hard to resonate with. Every girl wants to have a Barbie doll. To me, this is not true. We Chinese girls have our own childhood dream dolls. Barbie is far away from most of us. My friend watched Oppenheimer, but it didn't trigger a lot of discussion among us. I think there's a culture gap. I wanted to watch Oppenheimer, but I didn't have time. Since I have limited leisure time, I will choose movies that I can watch and laugh together with my family and friends. Oppenheimer is obviously not the one. The theme of Barbie is a bit avant-garde for most Chinese audiences, while Oppenheimer requires more background information. People joke that only those elites living in China's mega cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou watch them, and others were not part of the target audience. However, the expert believes the two have already done very well in the Chinese movie market. Barbie's box office is similar to that of La La Land in China, which was a surprise hit on 2017 Valentine's Day. And Oppenheimer's audiences are mostly fans of Christopher Nolan. I believe people who love such movies have already watched them. Others are just not interested. Just because they were not the highest earners doesn't mean they failed in China. Both Oppenheimer and Barbie were released in China during the summer movie-going season, a period used to be recognized as China's domestic movie protection month. In the past, foreign movies were restricted from being screened during the period as a way to support and encourage homegrown productions. But in recent years, the protection month seemed to exist only in name, as many foreign movies arrive anyway. Domestic movies released during the same period as Oppenheimer and Barbie included Creation of the Gods One, Kingdom of Storms, which is acclaimed as China's first ever in the genre of epic mythology. An animated film, Chang'an, a dark horse during last summer, which represents a panorama of the most excellent poets in Tang Dynasty. Audiences say that unlike Oppenheimer or Barbie, they don't need to do homework in advance before they watch Creation of the Gods and Chang'an, because the Chinese people are familiar with the historical and cultural elements in both. Creation of the Gods really impressed us a lot. I think it is a world-class production. More importantly, the mythological stories it tells are what we read since childhood. Hollywood movies may not be replicable or surpassed in some aspects, but with the emergence of more and more film shooting methods and the improvement of audience aesthetics, they are no longer the only option for the Chinese audience. Industry insiders say in the past year, China's domestic movies have been diverse in type and theme, and these can meet the demand of different audiences. Many of the realistic genre films relate to people's everyday life. For instance, No More Bets tells the story of online gambling fraud, a hot topic in Chinese society. And Under the Light is an anti-corruption story the Chinese people are familiar with. The sci-fi film The Wandering Earth 2 not only has stunning special effects, but also embodies Chinese philosophy. When a disaster came, humans from around the world work as a team to conquer the crisis. There is no superhero who can save the Earth single-handedly And everyone's effort counts. I think the key word here is confidence. The local supply of Chinese movies is abundant. The quality of the productions keeps improving. The scope of making a wrong choice becomes smaller. So audiences are more confident about choosing homegrown movies, and local filmmakers are more confident about producing better pieces. It's still too early to say that Hollywood productions have fallen into disfavor in China forever. But if they are still ambitious about grasping such a huge market, then perhaps it's time to make some changes.